Welcome to Bolts and Brass. Today we are talking about relative power for different rounds, different caliber rounds. And this video is actually the concept that got me motivated to start this channel. I was talking to somebody who is an engineer and very smart guy who, I mean, he's done some shooting in the past, but really wasn't, wasn't a shooter and he was interested in getting into it. And we were talking about the power differences between a couple common self-defense calipers. And, and then we got into, well, this versus a rifle versus different kinds of rifles. And what is the actual energy being created and, and delivered at different distances? And it was amazing to me that this is a very smart person. This is somebody who has fundamental knowledge of, of the physics involved. Certainly, if he had ever sat down and just did the math, he would, you know, it would click. He would understand. But it really wasn't there in the back of his head. It was not, you know, it, it's, you see the movies and these things look very powerful. And really, when it comes down to it, handguns aren't. Uh, handguns really, when you're talking about the power scale of, of firearms, most handguns rank pretty, pretty damn low. Uh, they are all pretty wussy. That doesn't mean they're not effective. It just means that if you're arguing the merits of this one versus this one, and you really, you're concerned that it, it is a huge difference, you're looking at it wrong. Uh, what you should be looking at is more, which one is the best for me in my scenario, my hands, my experience. Not so much, well, I'm getting more power with this one. So I thought it'd be interesting to break down what common calibers do for power. And these are all pulled from common sources. I didn't go digging for like, what is the max it can you know, possibly do? And what's the you know, craziest load anybody's developed? These are commonly accepted numbers, give or take a range. Uh, in every case, you're gonna find ammo that is lower. You're gonna find some that's higher. You change barrel lengths. It's, it's on a scale. One of the things to remember with, with muzzle energy is velocity counts for a lot. If you have two bullets that are roughly the same weight, one's a little heavier, one's a little lighter, if the lighter one is going any faster, the weight difference almost doesn't matter in the energy numbers. It's mass times velocity squared. So you're squaring that velocity and then giving it the mass. So if you're slow, you better be really heavy. 357, oh, sorry, we'll, we'll load a high. Uh, 38 special, 230 to 300, depends on the, the, the load you use a lot. Nine millimeter, 350 to 450, 44 ACP, 350, 356 was a, a low number I was seeing, to 550. Uh, certainly in both of those, you can go higher. Those were common standard loads. 357 Magnum, 550 to 650. And I saw some that were significantly higher. You just wouldn't want to put them in a, a smaller revolver. 44 Magnum, 740 to 1200. So that's the first time you step over a thousand. So that's over a thousand foot pounds of energy. Well, now you're talking that's, that's getting into small rifle category. And with the low end of 740, you can see that's a huge difference from the older, lighter calibers. That's, I mean, that is a magnum, right? So you've got 38 special, or even 357. 38 special is half of what the 357 does in muzzle energy, okay? Half. But then 44 magnum is higher then starts at the higher point of the 357. 
So you got that range for 357, 44 Magnum starts at the high end and keeps on going. So certainly, if you're arguing nine millimeter or 45, and you're arguing it based on power, eh, skip it. Uh, pick whichever one is on sale. Uh, nine millimeter is cheaper. It's easier to shoot consistently. Uh, it has a lighter recoil. So yeah, if you like big and slow, and there's, there's arguments to be made. Muzzle energy is not the be-all, end-all of stopping power. But it's not a huge difference. It is things like bullet design matter far more. So 5.56, five, the traditional normal round for 5.56 five, is 1,300 foot-pounds of energy. So not a whole lot more than that 44 Magnum. It's going a lot faster. Much smaller bullet going much faster. But that's still only 1300. That's I mean not a whole lot more than that 44 Magnum. So you got a rifle, big, scary, evil military rifle, right? Except that it's not putting out a whole lot more oomph than the revolver. And here's where it gets interesting. Many states, many areas do not allow hunting deer or anything bigger than white-tailed deer with a 5.56. 22 caliber is too small. They don't want you using it. There's not enough energy involved. They just feel that on average, it is not ethical. This is not an appropriate cartridge for hunting deer. Even the military says it's not enough. They didn't pick it for stopping power. That was not, it was, is it enough stopping power to justify using it? Yes, because a wounded soldier is generally out of the fight. They are less worried about absolute stopping power in the individual rifleman. The individual rifleman is not what is intended to be the stopping power for the military. So they gave up firepower from basically World War II on. We've, we've gone downhill. But what was it for World War II? Well, in World War II, we used 30 out sixes. 2,900 foot-pounds, more than double, okay, more than double. 30-06 is a common rifle round. It's very common for shooting deer, very common for all medium to large game in North America. 308, currently probably the most common caliber for hunting medium to large game in this, this continent. 2,600 foot-pounds. So even that, it's double. 5.56 five, to 308, which is 760 by 51, double, double the energy. And it holds it better at longer range. So as, as the round keeps going, you've got more energy left percentage-wise. 30, 30, 1,900 foot-pounds. Here's where it gets more interesting. 30, 30 is considered like the, the starting point. It's the comparison point for ammo used on, I call it medium to large. Uh, I'm pretty sure they actually call it large game uh, in the technical classifications. Deer and up. And deer range about 100 pounds up through several hundred pounds. And then you hit elk and moose and, and so on. Bears, uh, 3030 is considered the lowest caliber, the, the lightest energy that is good enough on that range of stuff. And only at close range, you can't reach out very far with it and expect to do real well. It is the starting point. And it's significantly higher than the 5.56. So where does that put us? If you're comparing pistols, they go from not that powerful to pretty pretty impressive, but most of them fit in that kind of middle ground, 400 to 600, and, and honestly, it doesn't make a big difference. It's bullet choice, it's shot placement, if we're talking self-defense. Pick what works for you. Don't worry about those numbers so much. They're really the, the least important part of the decision. 
And if you're choosing something to defend your life with when you have options, go with something bigger. Uh, a, a pistol is like your last choice. That is one step up from the kitchen knife or the, the hammer you left out when putting a picture up for your wife. It, it is, it is a, a next to last resort. It's better than your hands. It's not as good as a rifle or a shotgun because even a weak rifle, even an AR-15 and 5.56, which is the lowest rifle on this list, is twice as good. Uh, unless we're talking the 44 Magnum. And that is it. Hopefully that is informative. I will post this up at the end. There will be a chart. And uh, I will put something at the beginning telling us that there's a chart. History, you know, with magic. Have fun, stay safe, and take care all.